Hello and welcome to another episode of the Microsoft Spotlight Podcast. I'm back after crashing into 2013, literally, a couple of weeks ago, I right enough my car. I'm back and I'm, we have two Microsoft MVPs. So it could be nice to introduce our first guest, who's very well known in the community, Michelle Wong. And the other MVP just recently awarded, John Jarvis. So John, how are you feeling? Yeah, good. Um, yeah, we started this, what, two years ago, so... It's um yeah been been surrounded by spoke speaking spoken to a lot of different MVPs and and been part of the community now for what two years so yeah it's nice it's nice to get a reward I'm I'm looking forward to the plaque more than anything to come um and then like I think once once that kind of happens um it is kind of more real so yeah we're, we're excited to see what happens and and um and what the future holds so yeah thanks a lot yeah congratulations yeah. John for this. Thank you. Yeah, so obviously it's a conversation me and John had about well, nearly three years ago, really. No, we yeah. first met and planted the seed in John, who's then gone away and obviously done this podcast with me and gone and done his own things and been awarded. What what category is it again, John? So Windows 365. So it's quite nice on the on the first Windows 365 MVP in the UK as well. So oh, I'm, awesome. I'm, hold, I'm holding oh, that. <laughs> <laughs> So my, my, my accolade was I was the last MVP uh, in the UK to be awarded Skype for Business before they changed it to Office Service and Services. So that's my yeah, claim to fame for that one. So yeah, first, first it off, off, so that's, that's nice. I'm, 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 yeah. I'm happy with that. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So kick it off, Michelle. Do you want to introduce yourself to our podcast today? Okay. Um, well, um, I'm Michelle Wong. I'm living in the Netherlands. I uh, am actually a uh, Microsoft 365 consultant for years. I think it's about uh, in 2004, around 2002, I started using uh, Office 365 and therefore SharePoint uh, on-premise. Um, uh, so for me, it's an, an easier way to, to do Office 365. Actually, you become an administrator of uh, SharePoint Online and then you will uh, take your other tournaments and applications about Office 365. Um, so I was years uh, a consultant of free, uh, Office 365 and um, when the Power Platform stuff comes in, like Microsoft Teams and Power Automate, Power Apps, that kind of stuff. Another world is opening for me. And uh, I was, um, I, I did my step, I think about a few, few years ago to move forward to the Power Platform site. And now I can say I'm a Power Platform consultant for this. And uh, about three years ago, I was um, nominated by um, as an as an MPP, MPP on uh, business applications. So uh, I'm also an MPP on the business application category. And um, awesome. and now I'm doing uh, power platforms, uh, making apps as uh, and uh, guidelines and consultancy things about uh, about this. So. I'm, uh, Quite happy with this new uh, new career path that I have uh, taken. So that's another guest who has took the SharePoint pill as the consumption drug into Office 365. I say, John, you're, you're going to hate me. I've actually been doing SharePoint recently. For, oh my uh, God, you've changed. I know. It's, it's, I know. It's, it's it's been literally pulling my oh, well, pulling my hair out. You know, even though I've got none. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I've been doing SharePoint for uh, a charity. Uh, so I've, we're in a grassroots football team, so I'm helping the club transform into M365, and it's an interesting journey. And I have been actually implementing Power Automate into it as well, which is uh, quite cool. So I might have to pick your brains on a few things after we have this podcast on bits I'm not struggling with and trying to get the head around. But so yeah, uh, I, I think the the the, the organisations, the, the the business, it has been changed from uh, um, when they take their uh, decision to go to the cloud. And then the, the first thing is migrate all the things from on-premise to the to the, the, the Office 365 to the cloud. And then the next step is to make automation or digital processing or something like that. And then our platform will come in. I think that's an easier step and 
better step and better way forward to uh, to do. I mean, normally we don't talk about um, obviously technologies on this podcast, but I mean, recently I've been using Power Automate in more anger for some of the things that I've been doing. Uh, I, I, it is obviously a very good way of automating a lot of processes. I mean, what I'm using it for is just basically like a Microsoft form to capture people's details and then update a SharePoint list and have like a regular um, update process. And, and I've been surprised how easy it was to implement. I mean, I had a few like, moments where I've been like scratching yeah. around going, why aren't this working? But yeah, so Power, Power Automate is now obviously a very big uh element in you know what people do in a day-to-day job yeah right and um also i can say a few years ago um we have a developer who is doing development work for us um for example uh teams provisioning size provisioning something like that but now with the come of power automation and the connectors with for example graph api calls uh, or REST API calls, I can do it now by myself. So I become a developer also. <laughs> so that's 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 um, that's why that's why I said um, it's an another world, another possibility is opening for me to to step and move forward uh, into uh, into this kind of automation and thinking in this kind of processes for for this for the business what's need but but it's possible. And what we can do also without a lot of uh, technology, uh, program language, codings, and that kind of stuff. So that's uh, that's one of the reasons why I like uh, Power Platform that much. Awesome. And so we met obviously at the South Coast Summit last year, and obviously mm-hmm. it was just in the hallway. And as an off chance, what I do with most of my guests, I just basically throw it out there. Do you want to be on this podcast? And obviously, you said yes. And you were there with your daughter attending that event as well. Yep. And yep. Uh, she's obviously done. She's done lots of very clever stickers for Donna Sarkar as well. Yeah, yeah. She, she drew a, she drew a, a, a sticker for us, uh, two two different stickers for um for Donna. And um, actually, it was Erin uh, who who asked me uh, if she wanted to draw, and. Um, a uh, few years ago, I took my daughter with me to uh, the South uh, so- uh, Scottish Summit. It's in 2020, I think. 2020. Yeah, right. It's the first time I took her uh, with me to an event. And I was quite surprised because she, 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 she likes uh, the, the way we are moving together. We have uh, the, the, the community things uh, she likes and also she started drawing one of the uh, speakers. And um, yeah, from the one to another, the speakers are uh, talking to her and asking to, to draw. And um, and uh, and then, uh, yeah, she starts drawing a lot of different uh, stickers for, uh, for, for people. And uh, one of them uh, is for myself and also uh, I saw Andrew uh, last, last time at the South Coast Summit and um, I know she she's drawing but um, she's also studying for her for school so in the spare time she will try she will draw for community people let's say for people who are asking her and she still has a waiting list so there's a list of, of uh, people she wants to draw and also for 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 you, for for Andrew, for John, and for Sophie. So that's. Yeah, um, yeah I, I'm waiting for them. I can't, I can't yeah, wait. Yeah. Yeah, so the, st- the stickers for Donna were, were brilliant. I do have some knocking about somewhere back on, but yeah, they are very talented. I mean, my daughter's doing art at school as well, and some of the stuff she's doing now, I'm like bloody hell. I mean, all I can draw is a stick man. And, you know, yeah, but sometimes she's lazy, and then she don't have any mood to to draw. Then I would just let her let her go to the to her things. But um, if she want to, then she she take the iPad and the drawing pen, and then uh, she will start drawing, and then for hours. So uh, I just let it her her do her way. Cool. So let's uh, go back to the very, very beginning of your <laughs> IT career. Uh, uh, say the same see. thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, so actually, obviously you can see that he started in Hong Kong originally. 
Yeah, um, actually, I, I did my study um, uh, in, in the Netherlands. Uh, and when I graduated uh, from my, um, uh, when I graduated, I went to Hong Kong as, and started as a web designer. My study was public relations and communication, so it's not an IT related uh, study. But uh, it was in the 1990s, I think, 1960s, 69, uh, the web designers role come in. Everyone wants a new web design, a website. So I, um, I, I took the chance to, 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 to learn myself HTML and uh, designing tools. So I start my job as a web designer in Hong Kong. That's why my first, uh, my first um, um, position. And that's also how I enrolled in the IT world. <laughs> and I must say uh, that was uh, in the uh, beginning of 2000 and there was uh, only men around me <laughs> with, uh, in, in IT. And, yeah, I can imagine. Um, yeah, and after that, they are uh, in the, the after the few years thereafter, they are uh, asking more. For example, uh, you have to do coding, you have to do programming, and all of like other things. So um, I start uh, doing a self study um, after my work because I I'm not that much IT related, uh, not from my study or anything, but I know it is needed for doing my work well. So um, I start uh, doing uh, web development, web programming in PHP language, um, codings for uh, for uh, .NET a little bit, not much, but uh, I, I know uh, JavaScript and so on. I move forward, and um, and then I met my husband in Hong Kong, and and then we have to think about our future. Uh, will, I, will we stay in Hong Kong and do our work or will we move uh, we move back to the Netherlands? And our decision was to go to the Netherlands because I think here in the Netherlands uh, it will be better than in Hong Kong because um, the the governance, the, the, the allowance, the situation is better than or better organized than in, 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 in Hong Kong. So um, about 20 years ago, we went to uh, the Netherlands and I started doing my job here, also in IT. And um, I come in uh, in relationship with uh, with uh, SharePoint uh, on-premise, 2005, 2003. And uh, I did my uh, certifications and that kind of stuff. So that's 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 the way I, I do uh, my, uh, my job as an application developer. Um, administrator, administration role, um, and then move forward to the Office 365, uh, SharePoint Online, SharePoint Cloud, SharePoint Teams, uh, MS Teams, that kind of things as a consultant, sure. and then uh, now move forward to the Power Platform uh, consultant so, side. As you mentioned, obviously, when you first started, you were basically surrounded by a lot of males in the IT community, the people mm -hmm. you're working with. How have you seen that change over the years? Because obviously, you know, there's a big massive push now to obviously get more women in tech. There's more spotlight on things that people are doing in the community. Yeah. So how have you seen the change over in like the Netherlands? Um, yeah, I think um, it's, it's, it's still this, um, now it's it changed more um, because uh, there are also functional, uh, more functional jobs or positions, uh, or uh, there are more. Um, uh, how do you say? We will engage more departments for our projects. Like let's say, so you will have more uh, women surrounding and uh, uh, other women com comes in, but also technical uh, um, positions, uh, which are uh, claimed by a, a woman uh, 
uh, that that help that help us or in projects. So I see there is um, um, slightly changes uh, of um, different differences between the women and the uh, the men's positions. The the the, the how do we say it? the average of uh, of of this is is changed slightly changed. But yeah, maybe maybe in the beginning it was. 10, 20 percent women in the IT technology, but now it's uh, I think um, 30 percent, <laughs> 30, 40 percent are women. Yeah. So Oops, I know there's obviously we had, we had a fan K on the podcast uh, last year, and obviously I know that she runs the the Dutch Women in Tech events over the Netherlands. I can manage to attend one of them. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I know I know a few uh, over here in in the Netherlands. Uh, Femke is also an MVP uh, uh, of uh, Microsoft 365 uh, services. Last week um, as well, so the same day as me. Um, Femke is yeah. like a really good really good friend of mine. So like um, we talk regularly. So again, that was a nice nice one. I know she does lots of women in tech events as well over mm -hmm. um, yeah. over in the Netherlands as well. So yeah. Yeah, she's also running the Dutch Women in Tech in the Netherlands. Yeah. So uh, I am also a part of that. Uh, also, uh, Esther, Esther Bar Bartel, if I told and I'm good. Uh, and, and, and Rebecca Alves, there's a other Dutch Women in Tech in the Netherlands, uh, which are also MVP. And, uh, and Stacy, Stacy Moore. So, um, yeah, there are, there are more and more women's coming and popping up and uh, and also from the Dutch Women in Tech we are about 100 uh, members I think that's that's, and, pretty, that's pretty decent yeah, yeah. and all, all, all by by women uh, they are interested or are doing something already in the IT so I think it's yeah it's it's growing and growing and um yeah just just uh, it's it's the time just just the time that's needed um, I mean, it's great that obviously there seems to be you know more events that are focused around women in tech. I mm -hmm. mean, when obviously it was at South Coast Summit, um, yeah, we ran our session. I think your session clashed with ours, um, but like it's great to see so many women yeah. come into our session. And I, mean, I was literally looking just yesterday on the actual South Coast Summit website and got all the pictures, and that's, mm -hmm. I can actually see all the different people in the the room. I went. Most of them I've actually approached and asked to come on the podcast at some point. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, it's not for me, like, the whole like, Women in Tech, I do it um, because I know that I can make a change. Because I have seen how, from running events, that women are not represented as well as they should be. Um, there's obviously events and conferences where women are, you know, a minority to some degree because they're not enough females on the speaking list or they're not basically attending as yeah. attendees they're just there on the booths and um, you know that kind of stigmatism needs to change it needs to be people out there going you know what that woman there can basically do a you know a you know, a, a better session than maybe a male counterpart because she you know she lives and breathes it and it's just having that different perspective in a lot of events it's great to see I mean since doing this podcast now what episode or oh, it's about 53 so mm -hmm. we've done we've spoken to like, I think like 51 different women 52 different women in that time and it's just everyone's story is so different and their challenges that are faced are so different as well we've had some really like, negative stories on this podcast which obviously it's great to highlight but it's also celebrating the positives as well. So what negatives have you experienced being a woman in tech? Um, the negatives, actually, um, I'm quite positive about this. <laughs> uh, uh, not <laughs> not really good, negative. Thing, <laughs> yeah, I, maybe um, it's, it's from the beginning, there is a lot of men's around me uh, in the project working in the same team or in the same department and um yeah I, I i yeah how do i say 
um, I'm not that woman uh, dress, uh, dressed in, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, I, I don't mind it actually. Uh, and they, they don't mind to work with me. Maybe I'm a little bit more socialized. Uh, and and I, I also like to talk about uh, cars or uh, other things that any, yeah, the, the negative way is maybe um, the men's talk. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what, much about it. Or um, uh, if I want to talk about kids or about uh, home things or um, uh, the discussions with my, with my husband, then yeah, it's not. If you have a woman colleague, it will be easier to talk about than with a um, men colleague. But on the other hand, you can hear their voice or their thinking about them from the men's side, if you know what I mean. So I, I yeah, it's not a negative thing. I think it, it's yeah, it's okay. I, I can work with a lot of kind of people, so I don't have any negative, very worse experiences with this. But um, yeah, I can I can handle it. So. I mean, have you faced any challenges within the community at all? Being a woman in tech. Um, no, no, not at all. Also, in the in the community, there. Are, there are much, much good uh, women in techs that I can, uh, yeah, women in the technology that I can uh, uh, reach out to. Uh, but um, yeah, and, and everyone I, I know are very well, um, um, well, yeah, they are also always, always uh, ready and open to help. So um, yeah, not, 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 not that negative that i think it's it's um it's a missing thing also cool. yeah what kind of po what, what, what positives would you say you had with from becoming a woman in tech positive thing um <laughs> maybe i don't have i have to say that but uh the positive thing is you're in minority and minority, yeah, it's in the in the. How do you say? Um, because there are not much uh, women in the technology, they will respect you as a woman in the technology. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that very much depends on obviously your colleagues. Really, I mean, I remember when I was working the first time I worked in a, a large um, IT department. Mm -hmm. There were only. Three women, I think, at all med that were working in the IT department. And I know as time went on, more came in. But you know, I, I never saw them any different to myself. You know, we're always there pulling together because at the end of the day, you're there you're working for the same company, wants to achieve the same goals. Yeah. Um, and like one of the one of the biggest challenges I have like in my current role is I know that there's not many women at my level as an architect within Fujitsu or out in the community. I mean, there is some absolutely fantastic ones. I've met loads over the time, but they're few and far between. I mean, we'd, I would love to see more women come and join my organisation and be a part of the community that we've got there. But it's just, mm -hmm. so there's a very small pool to pick from. And it'd be, it's a sh and that's a shame. And obviously we need to try and increase that pool by like sharing experiences and that's the one thing that was always stuck with me from um, speaking with Donna is if you know a, a woman in the community that would be good fit for a particular role in the organization go and have that conversation and speak to her going look I think that you'd be fantastic for this particular role because you know you're taking your time out of the day to basically go you know I've earmarked you I've pictured you as a, a perfect fit for this role and that, and that helps everyone really it gives that Mm -hmm. that, that buzz, that that feeling that you know, oh, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm probably. But I know that like, women always, you know, when it comes to like CVs, men will look at a CV and go, well, I can do you know, half of that stuff. I'll, I'll apply. Where a woman will look at it and go, well, 
if I can't do 95% of it, then I'm not going to apply. So it's that there's always that different mindset for between a man and female. So I'm always on the lookout for people to come and join my organization and help build what we're building. Um, because I'm very much involved in the Women Business Network in Fujitsu, where there's a number of male alloys that are all trying to pull in the same direction to get more women involved in the, the business, um, getting out there. Mm-hmm. I, know, I know we had Storm Ray on the podcast recently and I put um, some of my colleagues in touch with her because it, it's important to, you know, have more women in the community that people can look up to and respect like yourself, you know. you. I was looking for you LinkedIn earlier and I can see I've seen the pictures from South Coast Summit when, yep, I've seen all them people, I know all them are, like, you know. Um, it's just having that that person always there. I mean, one of the best ones I think we had was, was it Stephanie Winter, where she saw Karuna as her like, Beyonce, as the uh, as a role model. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, yeah. When you say, I, I remember um, uh, a story from another um, uh, from another person I, I I've met in uh, in the community, and he said uh, he was also working in a large company, uh, but uh, over there there was a lot of um, how to say um, uh, uh, yeah the, the discrimination about women in the technology. They will think that women aren't that technical as they think. And I was asking him, is it an older person? He said, yes, it was an, uh, it was an, uh, an, 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 uh, a, a man uh, uh, colleague in the 50s. So I think that must be the reason why. <laughs> because they, they are working in that big, large comp- company for years. And they will sit so over here and they, oh, just say what I can do and I do it for you. Or they would let everything do and they think they are the best, they know the most, or they 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 will do it better than a woman who just come in just from school, starting her career in IT and that kind of things. And actually, I hate those kind of people. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> Why are you thinking about this? Why are you thinking you are the better? I think you will just sit over here and then wait when um, when it's time to go home. But I think women in the technology or, or, or young people, young professionals just from starting their career, they just want to build up and they they like the IT things, the technology that, that helps them, right? So why are you doing this? And saying this kind of bad words about a woman that just starting their position just during their career so um yeah but, uh, but I, I i try to avoid those kind of men but <laughs> yeah <laughs> but I mean, personally I that... there's always this kind of thinkings uh by some people so um i mean yeah. it's, it's not just in obviously you know our careers it's in you know many different walks of life as well where people have that absolute negative mindset towards me everything is like just why mm-hmm. you know yeah we're trying to live in a more inclusive world and you know you can't you can't be like that you can't behave like that anymore that's why there's so many changes in the world for you know things that are now acceptable that you know or so things that are now not acceptable but was acceptable 20 30 years ago mm-hmm. i mean you watch tv shows i mean it was now look on was it netflix the other day it was like a particular tv show and it says um, may contain offensive words because obviously it's a very old show. It's like, yeah, because it was acceptable back then, but it isn't now. It's like, it's, it's just mad. It really is. So, um, I would like to be fair, I would like to know more about the Dutch women in tech, what they actually do in the community over there, because it'd be nice to, you know, share with the audience um, who may be from the Dutch region listening or visiting the Dutch region in the future, you never know. Um, and just understand what the, the community offers to either people existing or new people wanting to join. Now, for, for now, um, what what we are planning is um, to um, help 
uh, to help to share the knowledge uh, or uh, to connect with each other. For example, um, we have a Dutch woman in technology we, uh, uh, which is doing security stuffs or an HR department or marketing or uh, they are uh, a power platform specialist. So um, if they are having some questions or problems or they want to know more about, uh, yeah, we, we will re re yeah, you can reach out to each other, uh, raise up your hands or ask questions in, uh, in the Dutch Women in Tech uh, Technology uh, Teams channels and then um, or we can try to connect with each other like a mentoring or coaching, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, besides that, um, the True Women Tech will uh, organize uh, different events. Um, I know there was a uh, Power Apps uh, workshop uh, organized by uh, the True Women Tech in the Microsoft uh, head office. And uh, uh, yeah, they, they, had, they, they have uh, a lot of uh, um, interested uh, um, attendees or, or, or women, right? And uh, yeah, so they can learn about this. Um, yeah, just on different different ways, we are trying to help each other. And uh, they are all, always in a lot of um, events available. They have their stands, so they are making noise. They are uh, organizing events and uh, connected with, for example, days uh, or if there is an event, maybe they will have a chat group to, um, to to meet each other, for example, during the lunch or um, come together, get connected and then maybe uh, go to the sessions of the event. So in different way, we are helping each other. Uh, and trying to let this community grow and be stronger um, and uh, help where there are their needs. I mean, it's pretty cool because I remember I can't remember who I was speaking to now. Um, I'm sure I may, may even have this conversation on here where, mm -hmm. you know, it is good that, you know, women in tech are arranging to meet up at events as well and have that communication because I know it's, I mean, Sophie said on this podcast quite a few times, the first time that she ever come to the South Coast Summit was her first ever event. She was quite nervous, didn't really know, you know, what it's going to be like, but in the end was surprised and mm -hmm. quite, you know, quite glad that how welcoming everyone was. And she just felt naturally a part of the community. And then yeah. since going to the first South Coast Summit, she went to the following one and people recognised her from the first one and started having a conversation with her. So yeah. it's, I think it's very important for any event and event organiser, when you are looking at the demographic of attendees, how you can support them, individuals that may be travelling by themselves, don't really know anyone, and you know, kind of give them a bit of a, you know, a community to, to lead on and not mm -hmm. be a part of. Yeah. Because, I mean, I've been, I mean, I run events, um, you know, back in 2015 um, and you, you, you could always see the regular people that would all, always stand together because they knew each other from either speaking together or going to other conferences together they've got that report and you always saw the others that are just there by themselves like eating their lunch attending sessions by themselves it's like you yeah. know Indeed, it's good to have same. that you know yeah. that relationship and build your your network basically it's one of the reasons yeah. why I started to use groups yes. in, in person. That's something, that, that's something that happens over a period of time anyway. Like I think everyone, everyone's first event, they probably go by the, go by themselves. I remember like a lot of my first, well, the first user group I went to myself, went by myself, which was one that you hosted, went by myself. Um, and then I went to the, the first conference, which was Commerceverse, like a couple of years back by, by, by myself, like didn't know mm -hmm. anyone really. And then, you start to, I don't know. You get on the beers and you start to start to meet people. Um. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 like, yeah. I think it very much depends on your personality as well. Though, if you were a shy, reserved person, then you, you're not gonna try and network with people, and it's, it's supporting them kind of people, and especially you know, women as well. But, you know, they will be more reserved because of that 
fear of being judged or you know whatever yeah. mindset they may have um because it's tougher for a woman to attend an event by herself because yeah, exactly. you know mm-hmm. you don't know anyone you, you're walking around and you know like what, what do you do so yeah it is, I, it's, I, I just recognize this because um, the, the first time I, I took my daughter with events, or in, with me into the events, um, she just didn't know anyone, just just uh, walk alongside with me and uh, and then we meet uh, different people and she starts drawing. Uh, and But the second time, she, she will recognize more people Oh, I have drawn you before, or they will have a t- talk. Hey, Rochelle, how are you doing? And so she's also starting growing her uh, herself in the community, but also, um, uh, yeah, the community is also um, overwhelmed or hurt her. And yeah, that that's it's uh, something that yeah, chemical is. <laughs> Yeah, she's, it, definitely, it's, it's, she's definitely growing her own brand. She's doing a really good jo- job of growing her own brand as well, right? Just those um, the the stickers of Donna, like people instantly now make that connection with um, you and your daughter, like so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like people, so that's yeah, it's it's definitely a really good way to kind of show you, show the pe- show the, the community who she is as well. Yeah. Yes. And and last last week I I told I told Rochelle, hey, uh, fam famke Konezi, you know you know her? Yes. Yeah, she's become an MP. Oh wow! So she, she's also talking with me, uh, just like just like, uh, hey, you know him, or uh, uh, how about Chris or this, and we just told told them told her by her, uh, surname, and she know who I am talking about. So <laughs> at home, I have um, a person I can talk about the community stuff or working <laughs> things. But <laughs> it's it's just very. Yeah, strange. You're making a mini version of yourself. <laughs> no, I, I think she, she won't do anything in IT, but maybe drawing or creative things will be something for her. But we just see, we'll see how it's, uh, how it's, uh, how it will be. So with the, uh, the Dutch Women in Tech, how many events do they run every year? On average? Um, I think it, it depends. They, um, uh, uh, they have online uh, meetings. Uh, they have uh, interviews. Uh, la- last year, uh, Fem- Femke asked me to do an MVP uh, meetings together with another uh, um, former MVP. Uh, and um, that is one kind of things. They have um, in person events. And then it will be uh, in one of the companies that is uh, providing their places to to gathering to do a meetup or so, and um, yeah, for coming yeah for this year, um, they will be in the uh, existing ex- uh, events. They have the stands, the booths uh, will stands will be available, um, and they were trying to do something like mentoring or coaching for persons who want to switch their career in IT or just just new in the IT and want some uh, persons to get connected. I'm not sure how much events there are. They have just different ways and paths to get connected. Uh, but uh, yeah, in on the website maybe there will they will have more activities uh, updated. So I, was, I was about to ask that. How, how do people find the Dutch Women in Tech? So there's a, a website. Yeah, there's a website, uh, Dutch Women in Tech, and uh, you can uh, register and join, and then you will, you will get into a uh, Microsoft Teams of uh, Dutch Women in Tech. So that's the starting point to get connected. And in the in the Teams itself, uh, there are different channels with different topics, and uh, if, yeah, so you can start uh, start get connected and have a chat. And there will be updates very, uh, very often when there is an F- event coming and uh, and where where we are located, and then uh, yeah, the conversations will start from the team itself. Okay, awesome. Right, John, I've led this podcast for most of this episode. We're going to start yeah. asking your uh, <laughs> your questions. <laughs> so, kind of, you're 
you know, you, you've been an MVP now for a good couple of years now. Was that three, three MVP years, awards? Yeah. Three years. Yeah, three awards. So, um, what's like, when you're looking for like a, a new MVP, like a new talent or something um, coming on board, what, what's the type of things you're looking for within the community to like, to get to that, the nomination process? Uh, to nominate that person as an MVP, you mean? Yes. Um, I will think about, uh, I, will, I will see what he or she is doing. Um, uh, uh, the, the, their uh, the activity or um, the contributions, what is he or she doing? Um, I, I, yeah. Normally, I go to events. I will try to speak on events. And uh, so if I m met him or her in events, I will, yeah, it will start getting my attention <laughs> for that. Uh, on the other side, uh, if we have some conversations, we get, con uh, get connected by LinkedIn or Twitter, then um, I can also see um, what he or she is doing and um, yeah, and also the main thing is the heart for the community. It's just the, the sharing, knowledge, uh, engaging, helping each other, that kind of stuff. If, if that is available, then I was starting to nominate, start, start thinking to nominate this person. Exactly. I, I actually, I also nominate a few, but... <laughs> Have you, yeah. had any that, have you had any that you nominated that have come, gone on to be an MVP yet, or? Yeah, I have nominated Cheryl Nedley. Okay. And she become an MVP also on business applications. Nice. Uh, I've no nominated uh, Femke Cornelissen. Nice. But uh, that was the second or third time, uh, but not for this this time. I can't believe, uh, I, 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 I just going to put it out on the podcast, I can't believe it's taken so long for Femke to become an MVP, like, yeah. it's, um, yeah, but she's there now, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I'm like, very proud of her, yeah. Yeah, yeah but, um, very proud That's one thing I do, I've, I realise in the community is, is kind of like, it is about not only the, what, what you do yourself, but also kind of helping others and being a mentor and stuff like that. Um, so, kind of, how important is like is there being a, a mentor to you, and um, and how has that helped you kind of get to where you are today? Yeah, um, I um, yeah, as a mentor, the, the most time, most of the time, they will come with questions to you. So actually, you you see what kind of questions they have, and then you you're trying to help to solve or give them a, a, a way to solve their problem. Uh, on the other hand, um, uh, yeah, just see what they want to learn, what they are missing. It can be something like soft skills, but also hard skills about, for example, codings or the bug or issues they are having. So uh, it, it depends, of course, but um, mentoring is most of uh, uh, most of the time is helping them out of their questions. Yeah, yeah. yeah I am also a mentoring uh, the Power Platform School. Uh, one of the mentors, uh, oh, yeah. at least. That's with Trisha. Tr yeah, Tracer. Tracer. Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and um, I, I called. I, I ended up calling a Trace on this podcast a while back. So yeah. I was straight out there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she she uh, she she ask um, for ask for some help uh, for ask for people who wants to do to do uh, mentoring. So um, I think yeah, I it, it's good for me to try also. So uh, I have uh, given uh, my name to her to uh, be one of the mentoring for their students. Awesome. Yeah. So kind of what's um what's kind of next for for you? Um, in terms of career, what, what's what's the aspirate the aspirations for you in your in your career next? Well, um, I just did a switch from Microsoft 365 consultant to Power Platform consultant. Yeah. And I just want to spend a few years to deep dive into the whole platform. 
uh, that uh, yeah, I want to know actually everything about this. And then um, if I know a lot and there is a possibility, I think the next step will be Dynamics 365. Because okay. yeah, it, it it's connected it's with each thing. other. Yeah. So that's uh, and I think that will make sense. Uh, let's say for that, <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense to do move forward to to Dynamics 365 because uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, in my in my world, the Dynamics 365 is 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 an alien. Um, yeah, it goes well over my head. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I I also have to step away from Dynamics 365, but I know um, the the free platforms. I, I, let's say the Office Microsoft 365, the Power Platform, and Dynamics 365. They are connected with each other, so. I think that will be the 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 next the next step, but if it's not needed, I won't touch it actually. <laughs> <laughs> so it also depends on the the the, the on, on work on the questions uh, from the um, customers. <clears throat> so what what excites you the most in being a consultant? Like what 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 do you enjoy the most about being being a consultant? The, the Microsoft consultant, um, three six five consultant, Power Platforms consultant. What is it that excites you the most about it? Um, if I can solve a complex problem from for them, um, and also if I uh, uh, solve a complex or create a complex uh, power automation flow, something like that, or um, I've created a uh, power apps uh, game that, that will give me <laughs> positive energy. <laughs> Yeah, I, in, in in spare time I will uh, uh, I am creating uh, games in uh, Power Apps, oh, trying nice. things out, and uh, yeah. So so if if it's work and I will do a a, a nice UI uh, in the in the app itself, and then I will start promoting it. But yeah, that, that will give me um, some positive uh, vibes. <laughs> And is there anyone? Is there anyone particularly that you kind of um, that you really kind of look up to in in the power in the power platform space? Uh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Is there yeah. anyone that you look up to and admire a lot in the power platform space? If you want to give any shout outs. Uh, yeah, there's too too much people that I want to shout out on the <laughs> Microsoft Power Platform community, but. Uh, I like the blogs of uh, Matthew Daphne and the videos from uh, Risa Dorani uh, and also from April Dunham. I learned a, a, a lot from them. Um, also, Christine, Christine Bolisetsky. I don't know if I spell <laughs> her, her, her name correctly. Uh, I, I like UI things. I my starting points from the IT was from web designer, so I'm a UI person, I'm a front end UI person. So um, I learned also a, a much from her. I did a UX UI day uh, from her, uh, but um, yeah, I start thinking about front end designing. Uh, of I'm doing a lot of this kind of thing. So um, yeah, those people are. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I've said, I think I've said to I think I've said to Christine so many times, like you know, I'm quite good. For, I get on really well with Christine, so I said to her so many times, like you're such, you're a superstar. Mm. Like I think, yeah, like in yeah. terms of the content she creates, like how much content she creates, and um, yeah, even some of the UX days, like it's just like, unbelievable. Like I say, she's a superstar. Yeah. Like, so yeah, yeah, it's unbelievable how much you can do in just few days and weeks time weeks of times um yeah i i know uh, yeah i think she is a robot <laughs> yeah yeah very much like the, yeah how she puts out content so kind of quick and yeah mm -hmm. like, i think this time last year i don't think many people knew who christine probably was yeah. this time last year mm -hmm. um but then since I think like May, June onwards, like, yeah. Yeah, the first time I met her was in uh, Scottish Summit uh, yeah. last year, I think. Scottish Summit yeah, last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. And then she started also Twitter and uh, other social stuff. And then, yeah, it 
the, yeah, it, it's just just uh, growing and growing, and uh, <laughs> now everyone knows her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, unbelievable. Anyway, I think kind of we're coming to the end of the hour now. Anyway, um, sorry about having to jump out quickly. Like it's um, no problem, really no. bad diary management by me. Um, not not fitting in five minutes to get myself a drink or or anything like that. So. Yeah, real bad diary management. So that's not. I hope that didn't come off disrespectful or anything like that. It wasn't meant to be. I just, I just it's haven't all stopped. Good, John. That's what yeah. that's what the editing's for. No problem <laughs> at all. But yeah, I just want to thank you for having me here in the show. Uh, so we, we we love having new guests on all the time because you know it's for us it's education. We, obviously, we're we're learning more about people out the community about you know, them as people. Because everyone can see you as a technical person because they can go to your blog, go to your, your Twitter feed, your YouTube channel. But it's also just understand that as a person as well. I'm just, you know, just connecting. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Yep. Cool. All right. And, um, yeah, so great to have you. And um, everyone else and Andrew, we'll see you on the next episode. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to the Microsoft Spotlight podcast. Please make sure you hit that like, share and subscribe button to help us promote our message. You can also follow us on Twitter at MSFT Spotlight and we're also on LinkedIn for Microsoft Spotlight Podcast. And finally, we'd like to tell you a little bit about Big Titan and thank them for sponsoring this podcast. Remote migrations start here. Let MigrationWiz do the work for you. It's fast, secure and 100% SaaS which means you can migrate at any time and from anywhere. Migrate mailboxes, documents, public folders, personal archives, or even Microsoft Teams with just a few clicks. No special training needed and no customer downtime. When the work matters, choose MigrationWiz.